Welcome to this PowerPoint video about borate mining in the Mojave Desert of California. This video was prepared by Buena Vista Museum of Natural History and Science. We invite you to visit us at 2018 Chester Avenue in downtown Bakersfield, California. Please visit our website www.buenavistamuseum.org. When folks think of mineral wealth in California, the first product that comes to mind is gold. Discoveries of gold in the 1840s put California into the world's consciousness and led the land to becoming the Golden State in 1850. However, less than a decade later, the borate family of minerals was discovered in California. The borax rush for white gold was on. Buena Vista Museum celebrates the relationship of borax to Kern County by showcasing borate minerals in the display case you see pictured. So, what is borax and why should I care? Borax is a mineral and the commercial name for a family of minerals, the borate minerals, that are processed in making over 300 products. So I will use the word borate rather than borax to define the resource. The most common borate ore minerals are kernite, eulexite, borax, colmonite, and tin calconite. More than 50% of the borate mined in the U.S. is used to make glass, ceramics, and related products. Other products made from borate minerals include paint, insulation, fire retardant, roofing, fertilizer, health and beauty aids, detergents, auto lubricants, and pesticides. Borates are also used in gold and silver smithing. Borate mining has had a greater financial impact than gold in 20th and 21st century California. According to the 1962 California Division of Mines and Geology report, Mojave Desert mining in the 1940s and 1950s supplied as much as 95% of the world's borate ore. This photo shows the boron operations of Rio Tinto minerals in eastern Kern County today. The ore comes from an open pit mine a portion of which you can see to the right. Over 100 million tons of borate ore have been mined here since 1927. Boron operations today supply 30% of the world's borate. It is processed into solid boric acid and other traded products. Boron, the self-proclaimed borax capital of the world, developed from being a Santa Fe Railroad siding named Amargo. You can see on this false color satellite image three key locations of California's borate industry. They are noted by the yellow stars. In addition to boron, borates are also produced at Searles Lake in the California desert. Borates are exported from the United States in part through the Wilmington Shipping Terminal in the Los Angeles area. Turkey, the United States, Chile, Kazakhstan, Bolivia, and Argentina are the countries where significant volumes of borates are currently mined. Although the exact amount of borate mined within the U.S. is withheld, it is still a significant player in borate production. The borate mineral borax was first discovered in California at Borax Lake, Tehama County, in 1856. This map shows California and Nevada borax discoveries of the late 19th and early 20th centuries. These discoveries changed the supply of borates to the industrialized world. Popular folklore of the 20 mule teams glamorized borate mining from Death Valley in the 1880s. Who hasn't seen pictures of the long mule trains taking wagonfuls of borax to the nearest railhead? But the most significant discovery of borate minerals in the United States occurred in 1913 at Boron in the Western Mojave Desert. More about the mule teams and that discovery later. This slide shows key events in the long history of borax mining dating back 4,000 years. In the 13th century, Italian Marco Polo traveled for 24 years to the Middle East and Far East. He returned to Venice, Italy with small lumps of barak, the Arabic word for borax. He had seen that borax allowed Chinese goldsmiths 
to process gold in a way Italians had never been able to do. Borax mixed with water was a useful soldering flux for gold or silver when making jewelry. The next several centuries saw commercial trade of borax from China to Europe with the express purpose of refining gold and silver. Borax came into common use in the United States in the late 19th century when Francis Marion Borax Smith began to market many borate bearing products. Most of the 19th century borate mining was indeed for borax. Smith marketed borate products under the 20 Mule Team Borax moniker because of the involvement of mules in transporting borax. In 1913, borate minerals were discovered while drilling a water well in the Mojave Desert. Smith's company acquired most of the properties surrounding the discovery well. Smith died in 1931, shortly after the mine ballooned into the world's biggest single provider of borax. Mining between 1913 and 1925 modestly increased California borax production. Then in 1925, another well, more than two miles east of the 1913 boron discovery well, found sodium borate minerals. Processing sodium borates proved more desirable than processing calcium borates. Thus, underground borate production ramped up significantly from 50,000 tons per year in 1925 to 7 million tons by 1950. The distribution of sodium and calcium borates is more complex than is what is shown on this 1960 map. The borate mining district became known as the Kramer district. I want to shift gears for a moment and talk about the mule teams and advertising. From the 1870s to nearly 1910, borax was hauled across the Mojave Desert by mule teams to a railroad. Mule teams were used at Searles Lake in the 1870s and at Death Valley in the 1880s. Borax is still processed at Searles Lake from Lake Bryans, a process begun there around 1920. As the mining of borax gold, silver, and other minerals became profitable in the Mojave Desert, transport by railroads supplanted mule teams. 20 mule teams were actually teams of 18 mules and two horses, with the horses being closest to the driver who was known as a mule skinner. At Death Valley, each 20 mule team journey transported 10 tons of borax in each of two wagons. No mining or transport was done during the extreme summer heat partly because new borax crystallized on the valley floor each year. The mule teams had an amazing safety and reliability record. Less well known were the hardships of 19th century borate miners working in desolate locations, often dealing with unbearable heat, cold, and wind. The mules, horses, and men each had specific jobs to do during journeys to and from Death Valley. The schematic on the left shows a team making a right-hand turn. You can see the names of each mule pair. The beautiful painting on the right is a glorified depiction of a 20-mule team in action. It makes the mule team look like the Pony Express. In reality, however, the mules slowly plodded up and down steep elevation changes and through turns, always guided by the mule skinner. The highest point on the mule team route was nearly 4,000 feet higher than the Death Valley Terminus. There is great irony in the Kramer Borax location. In this satellite image of the Mojave Desert, the 160 mile 20 mule team route from Death Valley to Mojave is highlighted in blue. Utilized from 1883 to 1889, this was the route used to transport Borax to the nearest railhead. But the 20 mule team route passed only 12 miles from the yet to be discovered Kramer Borate deposit. That deposit, noted by the yellow star, was only 20 miles from the Mojave Railhead. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, the American West was largely unknown to those on the East Coast. The mule teams became a celebrated advertising tool and a fixture in American culture. The Death Valley Days radio broadcast from 1930 to 1945 
championed hard work and morality to family-oriented audiences. Pictured is Ruth Woodman at a Death Valley Borate Mine. Woodman created the Death Valley Days radio show while working at a New York advertising agency. She was the story editor and chief writer of the radio show for its entire tenure and for the first five years on television. She became an authority on borate mining history and wrote The Story of the Pacific Coast Borax Company in 1951. In the 1960s, the Death Valley Days television show launched one of its hosts, actor Ronald Reagan, into a long political career as governor of California and later president of the United States. The caricature Borax Bill Jr. became the face of advertising by the Pacific Coast Borax Company. The original Borax Bill was mule skinner Bill Parkinson. Borax's use as an industrial flux and household detergent made the product highly desirable. As you can see in these photos, the Remnant 20 Mule Team route is now a national recreation trail. Portions of the trail near California City are paved highway, but most of the mule trail has been reclaimed by the desert. The next few slides focus on mining at the Kramer District. This photo shows a view of underground mining operations from about 1950. Borate mining at Boron was done only underground from 1926 to 1957. Over 200 miles of tunnels were created at Boron during underground mining. As you can see in this photo, by 1959, the Boron mine had been daylighted into an open pit operation. In the background are mine operations and boron processing facilities. Old underground workings have been filled in from the surface as open pit mining has progressed. By 2008, the pit had grown to two miles wide, nearly a mile long, and 700 feet deep. Ultimately, the open pit mine will be two miles wide by one and a half miles long. Current operations are progressing to access deep ore bodies in the southern part of the pit, which are rich in the sodium borate mineral kernite. Outside the pit, not visible, are large tailings piles of uneconomic overburden and already processed ore. Inside the pit, the borate ore is sandwiched between basalt, sandstone, and clay layers. Borate ores are almost always white or clear, so they visually stand out relative to darker volcanic rock layers. At 10 parts per million, boron is a minor constituent of the Earth's crust. So how did a gigantic borate deposit form at boron? Geologists think multiple geologic events had to line up. Pictured is a block diagram, a three-dimensional view that shows key features of the ore concentration. Millions of years ago, small amounts of boron eroded from igneous and metamorphic rocks into streams that drained the area that became the Sierra Nevada Mountains and Mojave Desert. Evaporation and hot spring activity in the lakes 17 to 18 million years ago concentrated and redeposited the soluble borate minerals in lake bed layers. When the lake filled in, the borate bearing rock lenses in blue were then buried up to 2,000 feet. Six million years ago, the borate rich rocks were uplifted and faulted in the western Mojave Desert by faults adjacent to the western borax fault. Erosion then brought the borate beds close enough to the Earth's surface for mining to occur. Again, here is our boron exhibit case at Buena Vista Museum. In addition to mineral specimens mined from Boron and Death Valley, we display graphics regarding the 20 mule teams and a 1950s mule team model. The next two slides show the primary mined minerals at Boron. Borax is the best known of the borate minerals. However, it is unstable in dry environments and quickly dehydrates when brought to the Earth's surface. Thus, a clear borax specimen, after losing water molecules, will gain a white crust and become tin calcanite. Borax and tin calcanite are sodium borates. Another sodium borate found at boron is kernite. 
named for the county of its discovery. Kernite also goes by the name Razorite, named after Pacific Coast Borax Company worker Clarence Razor. Razor brought that borate ore to chemists and geologists for identification. Freshly mined kernite has a silky or glassy luster, but like borax, kernite dehydrates with time. Ulexite, a calcium borate, has a distinctive silky sheen due to its bunches of parallel fibers. It is known as the TV rock because it can be cut and polished to be a natural fiber optic. As you might see in the photo on the upper left, letters are transmitted forward to the mineral surface through tiny parallel crystal fibers. Though fiber optic transmission of electromagnetic signals is critical to everyday communication, ulexite is unsuitable for that purpose. Colmanite, another calcium borate, is the heaviest borate mineral. Colmanite often crystallizes into beautiful clear clusters. Colmanite and ulexite were the primary borate ores mined at boron before the 1925 sodium borate discovery. Borate mining continues to be a big business in the Western Mojave, and the boron operation employs 800 to 900 people. There is still a significant volume of borate ore available at the Kramer deposit. In 1948, lithium, a strategic metal and key ingredient in electric car batteries, was found with the borate ores. In the 21st century, with a greater need for lithium worldwide, a pilot plant to process lithium is planned. The Kramer borate deposit is truly a world-class mineral location. Thank you for viewing this video and thanks to those folks who assisted in making this presentation. We invite you to visit Buena Vista Museum of Natural History and Science in Bakersfield, California, or visit our website at www.buenavistamuseum.org.